this video, we'll talk about the period of sinusoidal functions. Here is a sinusoidal function. I've set A, B, C, and D so that it just looks like a regular sine function. But I am now going to investigate how messing around with these parameters affects the period of this function. And the good thing is that these four parameters, A, B, C, and D, don't interact in any way. A controls one thing, B controls something else, C controls a third thing, D controls a fourth thing. So the period is going to be entirely controlled by just one of these parameters. And as it happens, this B controls the period. You see, that's at least for the moment, let's look at positive values of B. The closer B is to zero, the bigger the period. Remember that the period is how long it takes the function to start to repeat. When B is close to zero, when B is point 0.1, the fun um, to start to repeat, the function has to go all the way from here way up to here. It's a large period. As B gets bigger, the period shrinks. So now a period starting here only has to reach this value before it starts to repeat. So the bigger B is, the smaller the period is. And although in most sinusoidal functions, B is going to be positive, we can look at negative B values, and we see the same thing. Um, B values that are close to zero give you large periods. As B increases in the negative direction, the periods get smaller and smaller. And again, this B is the only thing that's controlling the period. If I mess around with this C, you see the curve moves horizontally, but the period, the, the width of the waves isn't changing. Here, Stuff moves vertically, but the period isn't changing. This stretches the curve, but it doesn't change the period. Only this B affects the period. But how does B affect the period? Well, for a sinusoidal function, whether it's the sine or the cosine, the period is 2 pi times the absolute value of b. Um, notice that x here is just a number. Like if you're looking at temperature, X might be days. If you're looking at heart rate, X might be hours. Um, because X is just a number, it's not an angle measured in degrees, we are working in radians. So 
This pi is usually an indication that you're working in radians, and that is true here. So the, the standard sine function, you can think of this as being a sinusoidal function. We've already said that its period is 2 pi. In terms of this formula, b is 1. So the period is 2 pi divided by 1. And it is indeed 2 pi. Y is the sine of 5x. Again, we're not writing in all of the zeros and ones, but this is a sinusoidal function. B is 5 here. And the period is 2 pi divided by 5. Finally, and just for variety, let's say the cosine. And let's write down a full sinusoidal function. If we're interested in the period, it's controlled entirely by that B. This three, this three, and this seven aren't doing anything. And the period is two pi divided by one fifth which we can rewrite. Um, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of one fifth is five. And the period is 10 pi.